Hey guys, welcome back to iCode. In this video, we are going to talk about provisioning profiles and certificates. I did a video on the same topic couple of years back and from the comments, I realized that I missed addressing some of the things. So in this video, I will not just answer to those queries, but we'll also see that how can we create and update the provisioning profiles from Apple developer portal. What all is needed, what you should take care of, etc. While some of you may already know this process, but in majority of companies, there are dedicated release teams who take care of profiles and certificates. And because of this, most of the time developers never even get the chance to look at how the developer portal looks like and how these profiles and certificates are created. Other than this, we'll also look at a couple of topics which were not covered in the previous video like ad hoc provisioning profile, enterprise profile, etc. But before moving to all these, let's very quickly have a recap to rebrush our knowledge on what is a provisioning profile why is it needed, how it works, etc. So let's get started. As a beginner, it's a real pain to understand that what are provisioning profiles, what are certificates, why they are used, what they do and how they do. On top of this, how are the profiles and certificates linked and the reason behind those random errors of code signing. So let's break the things and try to understand them one by one. Before understanding that how profiles work, it is very important to know that why profiles are needed in the first place. And the answer to that is code signing. Now what's this code signing? Don't worry, it's a very simple yet very important concept. In layman terms, it's digitally signing your code to ensure that your code doesn't get modified later. To understand this with an analogy, assume the classic message passing example. Let's say that you want to send some sensitive information to your friend. For this, you write it on a paper, put that paper in an envelope and before sending it, you seal the envelope. The unique seal which only you are having. This seal will give a confirmation that the information has not been compromised. If someone tries to access it, he or she will have to break the seal. The exact same concept is being used for code signing. When we create the IPA file for our application, it is digitally signed. And this signing is done using provisioning profiles and certificates. Now it will make sense to understand that what is provisioning profile. So unlike Android, iPhone applications cannot run directly on any device. Those devices on which we target to test our applications in the development phase, those devices need to be signed by the Apple first. Or we say that those devices need to be provisioned. Fair enough. You registered your device or in Apple's language, you provisioned it. Now, how will the system know that when you are installing your application, the device should allow it or not? If the device is not provisioned, it should throw an error while installation. So this is done by provisioning profiles. They act as a link between the developer account and the devices. When the installation is being done, system checks that whether the UDID of this device is mentioned in the profile or not. If it is there, the installation continues, else it throws the error. And not just the IDs of the registered devices, but profiles also contain the services which should be allowed. These are referred as entitlements. So before the IP is made, profiles are downloaded from the developer account, they are embedded in the bundle, and then the bundle is code signed using certificates. Not clear yet. Let's understand by an example. Let's say your company is sending you to attend some event. That event is having multiple conferences, and you should be attending only a couple of them which are relevant to you or let's say that your company has been invited to only a couple of those conferences, not the entire event. To let you in, the event organizers will need to verify your identity and for this, your company will give you an authorization letter mentioning your details, what conferences you are entitled for, maybe the copy of invitation letter from the event organizers. They can put all these documents in an envelope and seal it. So that authorization letter is essentially the provisioning profile. Now let's see that what all information does the provisioning profile contains. So there are three important things. Development certificate, list of the devices the app can run on and the app ID. I hope that first two are clear. Let's quickly see that why app ID is needed. So an app ID is a two part string which contains the team ID followed by the bundle identifier. So if the app ID that is in our provisioning profile, if it matches the bundle identifier of the application that we are trying to run, the system will allow the installation, else it will fail. Now let's look at the types of the provisioning profiles. Development, ad hoc, enterprise and distribution. 
starting with the development since it's easy to understand and we deal with it almost daily as a part of our development process. The development provisioning profile contains the list of our test devices on which we want to test our application in the development phase. It cannot be used for distributing the app on test flight or on the app store. For that, we will require the distribution profile. So the distribution profile does not contain the identifier of any of our devices and it is used to distribute our app on the app store. So if the distribution profile has been used, then the app can be installed on any device once Apple code signs it. And that happens when we submit our application to the app store. So development and distribution profile were straightforward. But what's with this ad hoc profile? So treat the ad hoc provisioning profile like a special key that let you share your app with a smaller group of testers who are not the part of your developer program. So it's the backstage pass to distribute the app beyond your usual testing devices. And this profile makes the beta testing hassle free. Basically, it's a way for testing on slightly bigger stage without going all the way to the app store. Now comes the last one, enterprise. The enterprise provisioning profile is like having your exclusive app sharing network within your organization. It's not for the general public or the app store. It's your tool for distributing apps internally. Imagine it as a private delivery service for your company's devices. With this profile, you can deploy and update applications among your team, keeping everything in-house under your organization's control. So let's say you are having an internal app which should not be published on the app store, but you want to distribute it with thousands of employees in your company. Enterprise profile is the way. You would be thinking that can't we do this with ad hoc? No. Ad hoc is for a smaller set of audience, 100 devices. These are other than the 100 devices provisioned with your developer account. But for sharing it with thousands of employees, go with the enterprise. Now we understand provisioning profiles, what they do, their types, where should we use each type of profile, everything. So now can we move to the dev portal for creating them? In a minute. There's one last bit left which I feel is important. We saw that certificates and profiles are used for code signing and if you would have ever observed the certificate creation process, it requires us to generate a certificate from our machine first. That is uploaded on the dev portal for creating the certificates. Why do we do that? This is because Apple uses the concept of asymmetric cryptography. In easy words, public key private key concept. Let's understand it in just a minute. Assume that Sam and John are two friends and they decide to encrypt their chat. For doing this, both of them create a pair of keys, a public key and a private key. Sam gives his public key to John and John gives his public key to Sam. Now when Sam needs to send a message, he encrypts it using John's public key and when John receives, he decrypts it using his private key. Same is done by John. He encrypts the message using Sam's public key and when Sam receives, he decrypts it using his private key. This is the concept of asymmetric cryptography that Apple uses for signing our code. Now let's look at the process of creating profiles and certificates. And hopefully, most of the doubts should get resolved with this. Whatever will be left, we'll see them after this. Log in to developer.apple.com and go to Certificates, IDs and Profile section. Select Profiles and you will be redirected to the page where you will see the existing provisioning profiles. From the same page, we can also go to Certificates, Identifiers and other sections. We'll see that in a minute. Now for creating a new provisioning profile, click the plus button. Here we need to select the type of profile. It can be for development or distribution, but ensure you choose the correct platform, whether it's iOS, macOS, tvOS or any other profile. Let's select Mac App Distribution for now. Next, we need to select the app ID. Select the app ID for which you are creating the profile. In case you don't have it, you need to create that first. It can be done from the identifier section. Then select the certificate. This certificate will be used to sign the provisioning profile. Again, you must be having this before creating the profile. Ideally, you should first create the app ID this is where you will specify the bundle ID as the app ID includes the bundle ID. Next, create the certificate and then finally create the provisioning profile. This sequence ensures that the app ID and the certificates are ready to be associated with the provisioning profile. As the last step, give a name to your profile and click generate. 
then you can download and install now let's say you have provisioned a new device and want to update the provisioning profile for it how can we do that so before we get into updating the profile let's first go over how to provision a device go to the devices section click on the plus button and enter the name and UDID of the device then click continue based on the UDID entered the model of the device will be displayed for confirmation before clicking register review the test device details section this section shows the number of devices that can still be provisioned each platform allows up to 100 devices now this is important if you have a large team if you provision devices without checking you might hit the limit and the key point is that you won't be able to remove those devices until the next membership year finally click register and you are done now let's see that how to update the profile Select the profile you want to update and you will be shown these details. Click the edit button and this is where you can update the name, app ID, signing certificate and included devices. The newly added device which is not the part of the profile that will be unchecked. Select it, click save and download the updated profile. Remember that you need to create a new build with the updated profile for running on the newly provisioned device. Lastly, let's look at that where do we update the certificate about which we talked in the asymmetric cryptography section. So when you go for creating a certificate, you first select the type of the certificate and the very next thing that you need to do is upload the certificate generated from your machine. The one that you created from Keychain. This is where it is uploaded. If you want me to cover certificates, identifiers and other related things in detail, please let me know through comments. Now let's look at the queries we got through the comments. I feel if you could have shown it through the process rather than speaking out. I hope the process made the things clear. Moving on. What will happen if I want to add couple of new devices to the existing developer provisioning profile? Do I need to download new provisioning profile and broadcast to the whole team? After creating the profile, if you provision new devices which you want to add to the profile, you will have to recreate the profiles for testing the build on the new devices. So go to the dev portal, select the profile you want to update, edit it and add the newly added devices and then download the profile. Remember that you will have to recreate the build with these new profiles. Existing builds won't automatically get updated by the new profiles. And I hope that the reason is clear because the profile with which the previous build was signed, it was not having the new devices mentioned. Can you please elaborate more on ad hoc distribution development and so in detail what is the difference between these i hope this is clear now we discussed that where should you use ad hoc where should you use enterprise and development and distribution are pretty self-explanatory they are they are comparatively straightforward how is certificate related to a provisioning profile do we use single provisioning profile for all the apps or one for each how are both the things related to the teams we'll need different provisioning profiles for different apps Remember I mentioned that the profiles contain app ID which has two components team ID and the bundle ID and the bundle ID of each application is different so in short different profiles. Please confirm if it's UUID or the UDID. It's UDID the unique device identifier. Could you elaborate when we use enterprise profile as a dev or distribution? I hope this video answered your question. Does this have to be done through main admin account or it can be done through the developer account? If you want to manually create the profiles from developer portal, you will need admin or account holder role. Developer role cannot create the profiles. But if you are having the automatic signing setup, developer can create the development profiles. Again, developer roles can only create development profiles that too with automatic signing setup. They cannot create distribution or other profiles. Here's the link explaining what different roles can do. So that's pretty much with provisioning profiles and certificates for now. I'll try to cover different types of certificates, entitlements and other things on those lines in a different video. If you like the content of this channel, you can consider hitting that subscribe button. Please don't hesitate in sharing your thoughts through the comments and spreading the reach of this video by sharing it with your friends. See you in the next video. Till then, happy coding.